Yo, what's up guys, so today we are gonna see, what if, Naruto was trained by mutant rat, and four mutant turtles, and becomes the greatest ninja master, part 1, hope you'll enjoy this video, so before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Chaos Magimin, link is in the description, and also subscribe to my channel, and like this video. Let's begin the video. One night in the village of Kanoha, a young blonde haired boy with whisker marks on his cheeks, along with wearing ragged clothing, was running from a mob carrying blunt objects, and shouting random threats. Get back here demon. We're finishing what the fourth started. This is for all the pain you've caused us. Today you die for good. The boy who was running thought, why do they keep doing this? I didn't do anything to them. Because he wasn't concentrating on where he was running he ended up tripping, and fell right on his face. We got you now demons. A ninja said, as the mob was right on top of him. No, please. The boy covered his eyes in fear. Right when one village was about to beat him with a club a Sai was thrown right at it, knocking the club out of his hand, and the Sai itself was impaled into a building's wall. What the? One villager gasped until they heard voices. If there's one thing I hate above anything it's messing with little kids. One voice said, sounding rough. Attacking a defenseless child is dishonorable for a ninja. A wise voice added. I agree father. So let's show them what happens when you act dishonorable. Another voice said. Is there, show yourselves. A ninja demanded. That ninja who was shouting fell to the floor, as something zipped past him, but remained in the shadows. What was that? Another ninja gasped until he was inevitably knocked out too. Soon the ninjas were being knocked out by some unknown force that was keeping itself hidden in the shadows. Terrified, thinking it was some kind of spirit, the villagers fled in fright while the boy covered his head, and laid flat on the ground, terrified of being next. Young one you may open your eyes now. The wise voice was said calmly. The boy opened his eyes, and saw he was looking at a pair of vermin feet that looked like the size of a human foot. He looked further up to see the feet belonged to an anthropomorphic grey rat with a white thin beard, and wore a red robe while carrying a walking stick. Behind him were four anthropomorphic turtles with colored masks on their eyes, and weapons on their shells. The first one wore a blue mask, and carried a pair of twin katana on his back, the second one wore a violet mask, and carried a wooden bow staff on his back, the third wore an orange mask, and carried a pair of nunchucks, while the fourth and final one wore a red mask, and carried a pair of sei, which explained where the one sai came from. The boy looked shocked, and jumped back on his rear backing away a bit, monsters. He cried in fright. The orange masked turtle looked at the red masked one, we seem to get that a lot, don't we? No kidding, he replied, but it's better than being called freaks. Do not be alarmed young one, we are your friends, the rat spoke in a wise voice, my name is Splinter, and these are my sons, Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, and Raphael. What is yours? Naruto Izumaki. The boy answered, still feeling a little uneasy. Raphael stifled a chuckle, named after a ramen topping. Raphael. Splinter turned around fast, and whacked the back of the turtle's head with his walking stick. Ow. Raphael rubbed the back of his head. Forgive my son's rudeness. Splinter bowed his head to the boy. Okay. Naruto replied feeling it was best to go along with it. Now please tell us, where might we find the Hokage? Splinter asked. Gigi. He's right in there. Naruto said, pointing to a big administration building up ahead. Good. We have matters to discuss with him, Splinter began, and I feel it's best you come too. Don't worry we won't let any more harm come to you. The blue masked turtle identified, as Leonardo added. Well alright. Naruto said, as he got up, and the five mutants escorted him to the Hokage Tower. In the Hokage's office an old man in white robes was sitting at his desk doing paperwork until he heard a knock at his door. Enter. The door opened as Splinter and the turtles entered with Naruto. Their appearances shocked the Hokage. What who are you? Be calm Sirotobi sama we are allies, Splinter said, I believe you know of Himado Yashi. The Hokage looked shocked and then suspicious. How do you know Yashi? Because I am his pet Splinter. Splinter answered. Sirotobi looked at him remembering Yashi once had a pet rat, you're Splinter, but how did you? I will be told Hokage-sama, but first I feel we should speak in privacy. Splinter said motioning to his sons, and Naruto. Of course father. Leonardo replied, as he and his brothers bowed their heads, and took Naruto outside. So Splinter-san, how did you get this way? And who were they, and why did you have Naruto with you? Sirotobi asked. Well Sirotobi-sama, I'm sure you remember my master's death. Splinter asked. After being killed at the hands of Orokusaki, Sirotobi responded, but before that he, and his own master, the Ancient One, trained here in the village of Kanoha for many years. When I heard he moved away for a peaceful life I was happy for him. But when I heard of what happened to him later I mourned his death. Splinter nodded, during his training I mimicked his movements from my cage, and learned the secret art of the ninja. When my master was slayed I was forced to retreat into the sewers below. Until one day I came upon a shattered glass jar which contained four baby turtles. They were crawling into a strange glowing used substance from a broken canister nearby. 
So I gathered them up, but nothing could prepare me for what happened afterwards. The five of us started growing in size and intelligence. When they grew the ability to speak just as I did, I began their training, teaching them all that I had learned from my master. And I bestowed upon each of them a name. Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello, and Raphael. An amusing story about Splinter San, and now I must ask why you have come here to Kanoha. Sirotobi asked. After me and my sons have defeated the Shredder and avenged my master, I decided to bring them here to the village where my sensei once trained. Though I never thought I would stumble across the boy, now that I have told myself, is the one who hosts the infamous Nine-Tailed Fox? Splinter asked. Unfortunately, yes. Sirotobi said in guilt. Then the rumors are true. The boy is seen as the demon itself, and not as the carrier. Splinter said in worry. You've heard correctly. Sirotobi confirmed. How do you stand ruling over such dishonorable and blind people? Splinter asked in almost anger. I ask myself the same question every day, Splinter San, but if anyone were Hokage they'd probably have Naruto killed the first chance they'd get. Sirotobi said in shame. And what of the boy's family, doesn't he know? Splinter asked. No. Minato told me to wait until he was ready, plus if word got out to his rivals that he had a child, then the ninja of Kanoha would be the least of his worries. Sirotobi explained. I understand, Splinter said until he thought for a bit, and looked at the old man, Sirotobi Sama, might I make a request of you? A request, Splinter San. Sirotobi asked. Yes, allow me and my sons to train Naruto in the art of a ninja. Splinter offered. Sirotobi raised a brow, and just why would you want to do such a thing? He asked curiously. The boy appears to have much potential, especially if he's able to keep one of the greatest demons at bay. His potential must be steered in the right direction by someone with experience and willing to help him as well. Only then he will make a true ninja, one just like my master and Minato as well. Splinter explained. Sirotobi thought about it, and looked back at the rat, you bring up an interesting point, Splinter San. Very well I shall leave Naruto under your wing. Ergato, Hokage-sama. Splinter bowed his head to the Hokage, and he did the same. They walked outside the office to see Naruto laughing with Michelangelo, while the other turtles sat with him. Gigi, these guys are funny, and incredible. Naruto said with a chuckle. I'm glad to see you getting along with them so well Naruto, the Hokage smiled, because we have big news for you. What's that? Naruto asked curiously while the turtles waited for the news as well. Splinter San here has agreed to take you under his wing and train you in the ninja arts. Sirotobi explained. Naruto was shocked while the turtles were surprised. Is this true? Donatello asked in surprise. It is my son. I see much potential in this young boy. Potential that could rival your own, my sons. Splinter told his sons. You're kidding right? Raf asked. Better than us master? Leo asked. Not yet of course, but come training, and a number of years, and he will have become your equal. Splinter explained. You really believe that? Mikey asked. I do Michelangelo, Splinter replies, but to train this one will take not only my guidance, but yours, as well. Are you four up for the task? The four turtles look at each other, and then at Naruto pondering the question if they're ready. Leo was the first to speak up, Sensei, Father. I'll do what I can to teach him. And so will I Donnie agreed. Count me in. Mikey clapped in excitement. They all looked at Raph waiting for his answer, ah oh, what the hell it'll give me something to do, so yeah I'm in. Splinter turned to Naruto, and extended his hand. Well Naruto, welcome to our family. Naruto smiled, and shook Splinter's hand, Ergato, Master Splinter. Sirotobi watched smiling seeing there may be hope for Naruto yet. That very night after Naruto had agreed to become a student under the training of Master Splinter, and his sons the Turtles, the Turtles were jumping the buildings of Kanoha Ninja style, with Naruto now sporting a red training guy uniform with black outlines trailing behind trying to keep up with them. Come on kid pick up the pace. Raph called back. I can't help it. My legs aren't as long and built as yours. Naruto shouted ahead, as he just barely made it jump to another building. When we were your age we could leap from a skyscraper to a small warehouse. Mackie called him. Actually Mackie you missed it, and fell into a dumpster. Donnie corrected his brother who groaned. Yeah I remember that. I laughed so hard I thought I was gonna bust my shell. Raph chuckled. Soon the four turtles stopped on the roof of a building, and Naruto finally caught up panting. How do you feel about Naruto? Leo asked. My legs hurt, my clothes are covered in sweat, and I think I got blisters on my blisters. Naruto said, as he continued to catch his breath. Just what I like to hear. Raph smirked. The training may be brittle Naruto, but trust me it's all for the best. Leo consoled him. I guess, so what's next? Naruto asked, as he finally got enough air. Stealth, Donnie answered, a ninja must always keep himself hidden from the enemy or any unsuspecting intruder. How are we going to do that? Naruto asked. Use the shadows to hide yourself, and never let yourself get exposed. Leo said, as the turtles jumped from the roof, and landed on the ground below while Naruto climbed his way down. 
Leo motioned them to be quiet and to follow his lead. Leo rushed along the shadows like a ninja, making sure not to expose himself, followed by the rest of his brothers. When Naruto tried it out he was doing okay until he bumped into a garbage can which made some noise. The turtles cringed at this, as Naruto ran quickly back to the shadows where they were. Word of advice kid. A little less noise. Raph said, which made Naruto scowl. Back at Naruto's house, which was more of a messy apartment room that could barely hold one person, Master Splinter was going over Naruto's living environment. He sighed seeing how messy it was, this is definitely not a suitable place for someone so young. We're back. Mekki called, as they entered. Welcome my sons, and how was your training? Splinter asked. Well Naruto's speed seems to be fairly decent at least compared to how most kids can run at his age. Leo said. Though he's gonna need to learn a thing or two about stealth. Raph added. Naruto huffed, and crossed his arms. This wasn't my best night. Splinter patted Naruto's head. Be a patient little ninja, no one can become skillful, and master ninja over one night. Master's right. It took us years to become the ninjas we are today. Leo explained to Naruto. Okay. Naruto replied with a sigh. Now I suggest a time of meditation for my boys. Splinter suggested, as they got into the meditating position forming a circle, and Naruto did, as well. They all started concentrating, until a red ore emerged from Naruto, and surrounded them, and soon found themselves transported in some kind of sower area. Where are we? Dunny asked, seeing they were sitting in water. I don't know, but it's giving me the creeps. Maki said. Sensei. Leo asked Splinter. It seems we have been transported into the mind of our young one. Splinter said motioning to Naruto who looked just as surprised. What if the kid's got his own sower in his head? Talk about weird things. Raph looked around. Eyes, what's that? Mekki pointed up at something. They all turned to see a giant gate with a seal placed on the doorway. I don't know, but whatever it is, it's big. Donnie said. Splinter looked shocked sensing what was on the other side of that gate. I sensed a great surge of energy beyond that doorway. They started hearing a menacing chuckle which really scared them out of their shells, but what was more scary was seeing a giant pair of red eyes appear on the other side of it. Come forth boy. Tichi voice called in a demonic voice. The mutants looked at Naruto, I think he's talking to you. Maki believed. Naruto looks at Splinter wondering if he should listen to the voice, do what your heart tells you to little ninja. Splinter said. Naruto putting on a brave face approached the cage, and had to look up at it the closer he got to it. Suddenly appearing on the other side was a giant red fox with what appeared to be nine tails. Welcome young one to my place of sealing. Who are you? Naruto tried very hard not to show his fear. I am the scourge of the ninja lands, the titan of terror, and the most powerful of demons to ever exist. I am Kyubi no Kitsune the demon declared. He sure has the title and reputation down. Maki admitted. Wait a minute, you can't be here if you were defeated years ago by the Yandane Hokage. Naruto said to the demon. The demon chuckled, is that what they told you? Those humans can't even tell the truth. They're worse than me. What are you saying? Naruto asked. Well boy since you're eager to know I'll be happy to oblige. Years ago I attacked this village, but I did not intend to do it in the first place. Kayabi started. What's that supposed to mean? Raph asked with a frown. It means Kappa, that I was hypnotized into attacking the village due to a powerful surge of energy that almost rivaled my own. Kayabi explained. Okay first of all I'm a turtle, second of all who would do such a thing? Raph asked. That I am not certain of. Kayubi replied. So where are you here? Naruto asked. Kayubi continued, anyway, the ninjas of this village attempted to stop me, but their attempts were proving ineffective. It was then that their Yandame Hokage used a special jutsu that sealed off half of my powers inside the body of a young child born on that exact night. And guess who the lucky child is? Me? Naruto asked in shock. Yes, you. Consider it an honor young human you house one of the most powerful demons in the demon realm. Honor? Naruto asked, shedding a tear, being treated like scum for something you did, labeled, as a scapegoat, being something people can just take their anger out on. He started shouting, in what part is their honor? The turtles and Splinter could sense the anger in Naruto's heart at the creature, Naruto you must be calm. Remember what I told you, anger clouds the mind. Splinter ordered him. Sorry sensei, but still would it have to be me? Naruto cried. A red chakra tail came through the cage, and lifted Naruto's head up. Igno you didn't deserve to be blamed for my chaos, which is why now I've come to repay my debt. What do you mean by repaying your debt? Leo asked. Yeah? Maki asked curiously. Because I am sealed into this boy our lives are connected, for should he die, I will too Kayubi explained, which is why I will allow him the use of my own chakra, with my power he will make a big difference in this human world. You really mean it? Naruto asked. I know it. Kayubi nodded. Ergato, I suppose. Naruto bowed his head. Just to be sure not to die so quickly Kayubi replied, if I'm going to be stuck here for a while, at least live long enough for me to see this human world, so I can tell the Shinigami and other demons about it in the afterlife. 
Naruto smirked, then it's a deal. In a flash, the six of them were back in Naruto's apartment. Did it just really happen? Donnie asked the guys who seemed to be just as confused. It has happened my sons, Splinter said, Naruto, how do you feel? I feel like my world is spinning. I suddenly realize why people hate me, but it's not even me they hate, it's what I have, Naruto pondered, but these people never told me about this. I don't understand why. I'm going to have a word with Gigi about this. My boy, I'm sure all will be explained. Until then you must hone your skills so that when the time comes the answers will be clear to you. Splinter explained. I understand sensei. Naruto bowed his head. And now it is time we all settle down for some shut eye. We will all need our strength for tomorrow morning. Splinter told his students, and they all agreed, and pulled out some spear mats Naruto had stashed away in his closet. The very next morning, Naruto along with the turtles, and Splinter who were wearing cloaks in their respective colors, were walking with him. His silage sure is incredible. Donnie said in astonishment while taking in all the sights. Reminds me of my old home in Japan. Splinter smiled. Naruto looked up ahead, and gasped seeing three people. One was a boy about age 11 to 12 with black hair and a short ponytail going down his back, and was wearing a headband around his forehead with a leaf symbol, along with a black shirt and gray pants. Accompanying him were two kids about Naruto's age, one being a boy, and the other a girl. The boy had black hair, wore a black shirt, and white shorts. The girl had black violet hair tied in pigtails, blue eyes, pale skin, and was wearing a blue shirt, a long skirt, ninja shoes, and goggles with blue lenses around her neck. What was common about these three was they all seemed to have fan symbols on the back of their shirts, while the girl had a black raven alongside the fan symbol. Itachi, Sasuke, Hineko. Naruto waved for them. The three looked over to see Naruto, and were surprised to see him. The two about his age ran from the older boy, and reached Naruto. Hey Naruto, how are you? The young boy asked. Never better Sasuke, how are you, Himeko, and Itachi? Naruto asked. We're doing okay. The girl known as Himeko replied. Ah good morning Naruto. You look pleasantly happy today. The older boy identified, as Itachi said, as he approached. You've noticed. Naruto smiled. The three look at the turtles, and Splinter, who are you? Itachi asked. Oh these are my new guardians Master Splinter, Leonardo, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Donatello. Naruto explained. Very nice to meet you. Itachi bows his head. This is Itachi Uchiha, Sasuke Uchiha, and Himeko Ankoku. Naruto introduced the three to his guardians. The turtles observed the three, and Raphael noticed the goggles around Himeko's neck, nice goggles. He stifled a chuckle. Himeko puffed her cheeks. They were gifts from Ani Kun and Naisama. She said standing close to Sasuke and Itachi. You're related? Leonardo asked. Me and Sasuke are brothers, Himeko is from the Inkoku clan, a side branch of our own clan the Chiha, that was set up years ago by one of our female ancestors who married another outside the village. Itachi explained to them. Sasuke whispered to the turtles, although we may look at it, I'm actually older than Himeko. Only for a few months. Himeko whined. Still older. Sasuke smirked. Himeko cried, you're so mean, Ani Kun. I know how you feel, Maki patted her shoulder, I used to be treated like that too, in fact I still am. Anyway what brings you three out today? Naruto asked. Well I had some errands to run, and my family asked me to bring Sasuke and Himeko along, Itachi explained. We were also going to get something to eat. Well you've got the right guy. I'll treat you all to lunch. Naruto said. You do that? Maki asked. How very kind of you. Himeko said. Soon all of them were at a small stand known as Ichiraku Ramen. They sat on stools, as they were using chopsticks to eat from the bowls. Ah ma'am, this stuff is surprisingly good. Maki said. Yes, a nice bowl of ramen is good for the mind. Splinter said. Pardon my curiosity, Splinter, but what ties do you have with Kanoha exactly? Itachi asked, as he finished some noodles. Well Itachi-san, I once studied under my master Hamato Yashi. Splinter answered. Itachi gasped, you were a student of Yashi. Naisama, who's Yashi? Sasuke asked. Itachi looked to Sasuke and Himeko who were curious along with Naruto. Hamato Yashi was one of the strongest ninjas to have ever lived. He started and narrated the tale. Hamato Yashi was an orphan, living in the streets of Japan with his best friend, Yukio Mishimi, many years ago. When Yashi returned a simple 5 yen coin dropped by an old man, he took them in for their honesty, raised them as his sons, and taught them ninjutsu. They both fell in love with a lovely woman named Tang Shen, another orphan taken in by the old man, though she loved Yashi more. One night, Yashi, Shen, and Mashimi saw a lone man being attacked by four ninjas. Yashi and Mashimi decided to help the man, and fought off the ninjas. This man who had been impressed by their skill, offered to make the two guardians. They accepted, despite their master's objections. As a guardian, Yashi seemed to advance continually, while Mashimi never seemed to get anywhere. 
In anger, he murdered Tang Shen and betrayed the guardians to another ninja clan known as the Foot, led by a man named Dorokusaki. Yashi escaped only to discover Shen's death and vowed to avenge her. He stormed the HQ of the Foot Ninjas and challenged Mashimi in combat. Mashimi died and Yashi had gotten his revenge, though the guardians had to flee to another land to set up their base. While Yashi traveled with them, he had also trained here in Kanoha with his sensei, proving to be a worthy ally to our village. Wow, what a story. Himeko gasped. But what happened to Yashi after that? Sasuke asked. Itachi sighed, it is said he had been discovered by Rokusaki one day. He was interrogated into revealing the location of the guardians, but he refused to talk. It was then he was killed. The three young kids were shocked while Splinter and the turtles who already heard this story looked down, knowing that because of all of that they became what they are today. Yashi sounds like my kind of ninja. Naruto said. Mine too. Sasuke agreed. Itachi smiled, well it's good to see you look at him as a role model. Splinter smiled, yes, all good ninjas could learn from him. Soon after lunch they all said their goodbyes and went their separate ways. Well what did you think of them? The two young ones seemed to strive to prove themselves. I could see it in their eyes, Splinter began, as for Itachi, I sensed something different in him. What a different father. Leo asked. I sense in Itachi's eyes that he carries a number of burdens on his shoulders. Splinter explained. Burdens, master. Donnie asked. Yes, though I am not sure what kind. Splinter added. That night on top of the roof of Naruto's apartment Splinter and the turtles were with Naruto who was kneeling before them. Remember Naruto, your training starts tomorrow and will continue on until you're ready to become one of the village's ninja. Splinter explained to him. I understand sensei. Naruto nodded. Don't worry little man, we got you back. Raph said. That's right, you can always count on us. Leo added. For real. Meki added, and Donnie nodded. Thanks guys, for everything you're willing to do just for me. Naruto said smiling. You will make a very noble ninja Naruto, should you follow these words, Splinter started, live by the code of the martial arts. Leo continued, never get into a fight unless someone else starts. Always stick together with your friends, family, and team no matter what. Donnie added. And if all else fails Meki trails. Then you gotta kick butt. Raf smirked. Naruto smirked, well, then bring it on. I'll show you, and everyone here I have what it takes to be a ninja. Took the words right out of my mouth. Raf said. Then go to my sons. It's time for training. Splinter ordered. The five stood before Splinter, and bowed their heads. They ran off, and started jumping the roofs to perfect their speed, and Naruto was able to keep up this time around, and when they jumped high up the image froze, as they called out, it's ninja time. Live by the code of the martial arts. Never get into a fight unless someone else starts. Always stick together with your friends, family, and team no matter what. If all else fails, then you gotta kick butt. These were the words I was taught by my senpais and brothers the night I was taken under the wing of Master Splinter. Trained in the art of ninjutsu, me and my brother figures Leo, Don, Mikey, and Raf trained together in hopes that one day I will rise up and become a great ninja. Naruto was seen running and jumping along buildings of Kanoha with the turtles at night. The scene faded to him fighting each of the turtles using the same weapons they use individually. During that time I made some friends, especially Sasuke and Himeko, but one day their lives changed forever. Itachi, the one who always looked out for them, slaughtered their families leaving only them alive, but that resulted in Himeko unleashing two surges of chakra that seemed unreal. According to Sasuke, even Itachi was surprised, but managed to escape. We found out from the old man that Himeko seemed to have two types of chakra. Light and dark. She doesn't remember how or what she did that night which confused all of us. Sasuke vowed that he and Himeko would make Itachi pay for what he did to their family, and I agreed to help them in any way possible. And now to this day we train hard, fight hard, and live for the future. We are ninja. The scene cuts to the present day, where 13-year-old Naruto was wearing wooden sandals, black pants, a red shirt, along with a red robe over it with brown shoulder pads, and a black sash tied around his waist. He was jumping from rooftop to rooftop on his way to the ninja academy. When he landed outside the building, he spotted Sasuke wearing white shorts, a blue shirt with Ichiha crest on back, along with ninja sandals, and Himeko who now let her hair down instead of pigtails. She wore a white shirt with a black raven on it, black pants, ninja sandals, and her goggles around her head. Morning guys. Naruto greeted them. Morning Naruto. Himeko smiled. How's it going? Sasuke asked. Perfect. Tonight I'm finally going to get my selected ninja weapon. Naruto explained. Good for you. Himeko said. Just be careful with how you use it, otherwise you'll hurt yourself, or someone else. Sasuke jokes. Very droll Sasuke. Naruto scowled. Come on, let's go. Himeko dragged the boys inside the academy. Inside the academy, the three sat together with Sasuke in the middle, Naruto on his right, and Himeko on his left. As Naruto and Sasuke rested their heads back Himeko was singing softly to herself. 
Soon the fangirls came storming in led by Sakura Haruno, and Ino Yamanaka who spotted Sasuke. Sasuke whispered to his cousin and friend, cover me. Naruto nodded, as the girls charged over to their table. They started demanding that Naruto get up, but he didn't budge even when they threatened to beat him to a bloody pulp. Soon Sakura and Ino spotted Himeko. Himeko, could you please scoot somewhere so I can sit next to Sasuke-kun? Sakura asked, but Himeko wasn't listening, but was still singing to herself. Don't listen to forehead Himeko, let me sit next to Sasuke-kun please. Ino pleaded. Himeko ignored Ino, as well, and just kept singing to herself which was really getting on the girl's nerves. Hey are you listening? Ino shouted, but Himeko still didn't budge. Don't ignore us. Sakura shouted until she grabbed Himeko's arm making her turn towards Sakura with angered eyes. Don't touch me. Himeko growled. Naruto and Sasuke could see the dark chakra from her acting up which only Sasuke knew was really coming. Now you've done it. Sasuke shouted. Suddenly all the light bulbs in the room burned out which scared the students. Naruto and Sasuke calmed her down until she stopped fidgeting. What's up? Himeko asked like she didn't do anything. Nothing, Sakura and Ino were just going to sit elsewhere. Sasuke began to look at the two girls, right? Ah, uh, right of course. Sakura said, as she and Ino found other seats along with the other spooked fangirls. That was close. Naruto said to Sasuke. No kidding. Sasuke agreed. Erika walked in and saw the condition of the light bulbs and sighed, Himeko. Soon after the lesson the three got outside before the fangirls could get to Sasuke. Come on guys, let's get lunch. Naruto said. Good idea, last one there buys it. Himeko said, taking off. Hey. Sasuke shouted. Head start no fair. Naruto shouted, as he and Sasuke ran after her, making all three of them neck and neck. I'm not losing to either of you. Sasuke called, as they raced. Will you lose against one of us? Naruto said, as he used his ninja speed that he's worked on from all the nightly training with the turtles, and ran ahead of them. Looks like it's me, and you, Naikan. Himeko smirked. I'm not losing to my own cousin. Sasuke said. First time for everything. Himeko replied, as they raced like crazy. Naruto was already at Ichiraku sitting on a stool until he saw the two racing cousins make a jump for it, and slid right for the stand with Himeko reaching it before Sasuke. Victory. Himeko cheered. Sasuke grumbled, as Naruto looked at him, tough break. Looks like you gotta pay. Himeko stuck her tongue out at him. Sasuke then smirked, well if I'm paying then I decide what you eat, which means no sweet stuff. Himeko pouted, just because you don't like sweet stuff doesn't mean you have to deprive me of it. Need I remind you of the sugar rush you had two days ago? Sasuke asked, bringing up an old incident. No, Himeko pouted while drumming her index fingers together. Soon the three were enjoying ramen while they talked. Can you believe it? In two days we're going to become ninjas. Himeko said. All this training and waiting have finally paid off for us. Sasuke added, as he ate. One thing that is me concerned about is that I hope it's not the clone like before, Naruto began, I think that they keep making it for the test, because they know that's my worst technique. Why would they do that on purpose? Sasuke asked. I know you're not the most loved person in the village, but do you really think they'd do that? Himeko asked. You'd be surprised. Naruto mumbled. Why do the people loathe you so much anyway? Sasuke asked, what did you ever do to them? Who knows Sasuke? Naruto replied not wanting to tell them about Kayabi. Soon enough they finished their meals and headed home. Naruto was walking to his apartment and entered to see the turtles cleaning his place up. Hey guys. Naruto said. Hey Naruto, how is the academy today? Leo asked. Well you know Leo, same old same old. Naruto replied. Boring ha. Huh? Raf asked. You know it. Naruto nodded. Nevertheless my son, Splinter began, as he walked in, every lesson is crucial to a ninja. Yes, sensei. Naruto, and Raf nod. Splinter looked at Naruto, Naruto, tonight you will be tested to see which will become your ninja weapon. Hi sensei. Naruto bowed his head. Meanwhile that night Sasuke and Himeko were out by the pond working on jutsus. Kaden. To Kakuyu no he shouted, blowing a stream of fire out. Himeko thought to herself, they said I had two forms of chakra, how can I use them? She thought until she got ready. At first all she could feel was her regular chakra until she felt another two, I think this is them she thought, as she focused causing two chakra auras to appear in her hands, one being light, and the other being dark, now to see how they work, she said. As she sends a collaborative blast of both elements resulting in a big burst, whoa. She gasped. Amazing. Sasuke was astounded. Suddenly the burst of light and dark reconfigured, and took the form of a twilight raven compass from the light and dark chakra. No way. Sasuke gasped. Himeko smiled, and waved a little at it, and to her surprise, it waved its wing a little before it dispersed again. What was that? Sasuke asked his cousin. I don't know. She replied. Sasuke then smirked, well I think you just found your trump card. Himeko blushed from embarrassment, as she tried to do it again, but this time it went badly. 
The two streams of light and dark being launched from her palms were going right and left out of control with Himeko trying to control them. It's too much. She cried, unable to stand it. Hang on. Sasuke grabbed her arms and helped her maneuver the two streams until they died down. You okay? He asked his cousin. Fine, but that was a close one. Himeko replied. How come you couldn't control it that time? I wonder. He pondered. I don't know. Himeko answered in equal confusion. Sasuke looked at her seriously, be careful on how you use those abilities. Himeko nodded knowing he meant it. Come on, let's head home. Sasuke said, as they walked back home. Naikan? Himeko asked Sasuke. Yeah? Can I sleep with you tonight? She asked. Again? You haven't slept by yourself since that incident. Sasuke reminded her. But I'm just scared. She said putting on her scared face. Sasuke sighed, fine, but don't hug the covers like last time. Eh? She cheered. Meanwhile that night over at Naruto's apartment, Naruto sat before a table that had another set of the turtle's weapons displayed on it, while Splinter and the turtles sat on the opposite side Naruto was sitting. The time has come my son, Splinter tells Naruto. Since you've trained with all four of my son's weapons, it's time to see which weapon is most compatible with you. Naruto looked at the weapons, so which one will I be getting? He asked, reaching for one until Splinter whacked the table with his cane. No, that's not how it works. Splinter ordered. Then how? Naruto asked. It is said that the weapon of choice will choose its owner, as much as you choose it. You must concentrate, and it will come to you. Splinter instructed. Very well sensei, Naruto said, as he got into meditating position, and concentrated hard, it will come to me. It will come to me. He thought. The turtles and their sensei watched, as all four weapons started glowing, and levitated up towards Naruto. What the shell? Raph gasped. Sensei what's happening? Donnie asked. It appears they have all chosen him. Splinter answered in awe. Boo freaky. Maki said. Naruto opened up his eyes, and saw the weapons land in his lap. Sensei what does this mean? Splinter smiled, it means my son that all of the weapons were made for you to wield. Wow. Naruto gasped. Is it even possible sensei? Leo asked. Well it's never happened before. Splinter admitted being the first time he's seen this happen. Well how about that Nar? Looks like he'll be fighting with all our moves. Meki rubbed his bro's head. This is too good to be true. Naruto smiled seeing he can now train in the art of weaponry and ninjutsu. Twas the night before the genin exams at the ninja academy, Naruto was reading comics with Meki. And this is the king of my collection, Naruto, Meki held up a comic, a min condition of justice force volume 1. Whoa. It must be worth a fortune from where you live. Naruto said in awe. You bet it is. Meki confirmed until a shadow crept over them. They tensed up and turned to see their master, Sensei. Naruto gasped. Naruto, the genin exams are tomorrow. You should be asleep. Splinter instructed his youngest student. But Sensei I'm too excited to sleep. Splinter sighed, a ninja must have his rest otherwise he will be too tired in the morning. Understood Sensei. Naruto replied not wanting to argue with him. Meanwhile at the Hokage administration building, Sirotobi was in a meeting with Himera, Kaharu, and Danzo, the Kanoha Council. What is the reason you three have called this meeting so late? Sirotobi felt that these late-nighters aren't good for someone of his old age. Sirotobi, we called this meeting in regards to two of the academy students, preferably Naruto Uzumaki and Himeko Ankoku. Humura started. Oh, and what of them? Sirotobi asks knowing where this is going. We've noticed that the boy has been given outside training from the academy by people not among the village. Danzo started. Many witnesses claim them to be walking turtles and a rat. Kaharu added. And your point with that being? Sirotobi asked like it was nothing. So you're going to just allow this? Danzo asked roughly. Naruto has had nobody to help him with anything including ninja work. It's bad enough the villagers have made his life hell. I will not deny him any training. Sirotobi answered, as for the people training him, they are very dedicated allies believe it or not. The three opposers sighed knowing they can't press Naruto any further. Now what do you have to say about him Echo? Sirotobi asked. Come now Sirotobi, even you couldn't have been blind and not see what went on in the Chiha district. Hamura said knowing they all saw the collaborative force of both chakras Himeko used. They knew it was Himeko because there was no way it could have come from Sasuke knowing more about him than they did Himeko. Yes. I did happen to see that, but I don't know too much of how she can do that. Sirotobi answered. According to the records found, the Inkoku clan was a simple family clan that worshipped bird-like deities. Kaharu added. It's unknown if the family had any special family techniques or bloodlines, Hamura added, though seeing that jutsu she attempted to conjure we may have been deceived. If that's the case then we should take her in, and find out what it is. Danzo declared. Sir Toby slammed his hands on his desk, I forbid it. He shouted startling them, Himeko has been through enough traumas in her life. She doesn't need this to burden her. 
but you've noticed how she acts with certain people, and at certain times, Danzo started, one minute she's calm, and collected, next thing she's gone completely insane, and forgets ever acting that way. Believe she's being pressured or messed with, just leave her alone, and she will be fine, Sarah Toby said, if all's set this meeting is done. The Hokage declared, and the three left him. Sir Toby sighed, this is becoming difficult, he said, as he reached into a drawer pulling out a file on the Inkoku clan. I can't let any of them find out the truth about the clan being masters over Light Chakra and Dark Chakra. Kami knows what they'd do to Himeko if they trained and tortured her to use the chakras for wrong reasons, he said to himself, besides, as of now she's unable to fully control them, she'll need to train hard and practice before she can successfully use those chakras in battle. The night continued until morning came. Naruto now had a belt around his waist with holsters for both his chucks and his sei, along with shoulder belts, to hold his twin katanas, to form an X-form, along with his bow staff going down the middle of the two crossed swords. He was on his way towards the ninja academy until he spotted Sasuke and Himeko waiting for him. Hey guys. Naruto called landing before them. Morning Naruto. Himeko greeted her, and her cousin noticed he was decked out with four types of weapons. What happened last night? Sasuke asked. Well apparently all the weapons chose me to be their wielder. Naruto explained. Congressman I'm happy for you. Sasuke said, as the two fists bumped. Thanks man. Well guys, our future awaits us. Naruto said, as the three headed inside. They took their seats however Naruto decided to sit elsewhere, and his seat of choice he decided was right next to Hinata Hayuga of the Hayuga clan. The Hayuga girl who had always been the shy silent type blushed, as Naruto sat next to her. Hi Hinata how are you today? Naruto asked. Hinata blushed and said, I'm fine, thank you. That's good. Naruto smiled as he stretched his arms. Hinata wanted to have a conversation with Naruto, so she just spoke about the first thing she could think of, I am I like your weapons, Naruto-kun. She said seeing the weapons on Naruto's person. Really? Well thanks, Naruto smiled. Believe it or not these weapons chose me to be their wielder. Choose you? Why would weapons want to choose you? A voice belonging to Kiba and Yuzuka asked, sitting a few seats behind them. Naruto frowned, do us a favor, and go piss on a fire hydrant Kiba. What was that? Kiba barked, and growled while his dog Akimaru whimpered. Naruto chuckles while Hinata stifled a giggle. Sunaruka came in with his partner Mizuki, good morning class. Today is the day you will be tested to see if you qualify to be a Kanoha ninja. Mizuki announced. Pass, and you will be given one of these, Iruka motioned to his Kanoha headband, fail, and you'll just have to try next year. We will call you up in alphabetical order, your performance is to make at least two clones. Mizuki explained. Naruto's eyes widened at the sound of what they had to do, and thought, I am so screwed. Naruto watched, as each student was going in, and successfully coming out wearing a Kanoha headband. First was Himeko wearing hers around her neck, and smiling along with Sasuke wearing his around his forehead. A few more students later saw Hinata come out with one. Congratulations Hinata. Naruto said nervously. Are you okay, Naruto-kun? Hinata asked. Yeah, I'm fine. Just a bit edgy that's all. Naruto said nervously. Hinata smiled, well, just do your best. Right, my best. Naruto said knowing that his best when it comes to the clone jutsu wasn't enough. His training with Splinter and the Turtles had improved a bit, but not too much. Naruto then heard his name be called up, he got up and walked into another room where Iruka and Mizuki sat at a desk. Okay Naruto we're going to need you to perform the bunch and not to pass. Iruka said. Do your best now. Mizuki smiled. Okay, Naruto said, and concentrated on his chakra, here goes everything. He thought, as he called out, Bunshin no, and in a puff of smoke two clones stood beside him, ha I did it, I passed. Naruto cheered. Naruto, look at your clones, Iruka said dryly. Naruto was confused until he looked at his clones' faces, seeing them look pale-faced, and sickly, oh you gotta be kidding me. I'm sorry Naruto, but I can't give this a passing grade, Iruka explained. Oh come now Iruka, he did manage to make two clones, so what if they look a little pale? Mizuki asked what the big deal was. Mizuki, you know, as well as any enemy ninja would easily see right through this, Uruka replied before turning back to the boy. Sorry Naruto, but you'll have to wait until next year. Naruto looked like his dreams were shattered, and looked ready to cry, but instead his eyes firmed, and lips frowned, I'll bet you're sorry. He said rudely to Uruka which caught him by surprise, because I'm sorry I had a jerk like you for a sensei. Naruto snapped before leaving the room. Naruto. Uruka wanted to go after him, but Mizuki stopped him. It's best we left him alone Uruka. Mizuki said, and Iruka sighed, and sat back down. Naruto returned to the classroom, and everyone noticed he didn't have a headband. Naruto, Hinata, and Himeko thought sadly. Oh man. Sasuke thought feeling bad for him. Didn't make the cut ha Naruto. Kiba jokes, oh well there's always next year. He laughed a bit mockingly. Naruto's anger built up until he couldn't take it anymore. So he grabbed a sigh, and threw it right for Kiba impaling the desk behind the victim. 
Kiba was shocked to see how that almost hit him. Naruto stood on top of the desk Kiba was sitting at, grabbed his sai, and put it back in its holster in his belt. He glared furiously at Kiba, but left him, and smiled at Sasuke and Himeko to cover his rage. Good luck you guys. He said before leaving. Naruto. Himeko wanted to go after him, but Sasuke pulled her back. I think it's best we leave him alone for a while. Sasuke said. Himeko sighed, but knew it was the best choice. Naruto was walking away from the ninja academy with his head down, and face plastered with anger, I don't need that stupid academy anyway. I'll be my own ninja. Soon Naruto was by a training field practicing with his ninja weapons, so he could blow off his built up anger. Soon he finished, and started to calm down. Had enough Naruto? A voice asked. Naruto turned, and saw Mizuki smiling, Mizuki sensei, what do you want? Just to have a word with you, Mizuki replied, I know you worked hard to make the jutsu work, and that's why I've come to offer you a chance with some makeup work. Makeup work? Naruto asked, raising a brow. Mizuki nodded, yes, all you have to do is snatch a forbidden scroll from the administration building, learn some of the jutsus, and you'll be awarded bonus credit. Naruto liked the sound of that smile. Well if you really mean that, okay where should we meet? Back here tonight sounds good. Mizuki asked. It's perfect, Naruto confirmed, I'll go, and plan right away. He said taking off leaving Mizuki who was smirking. Soon it was around nightfall Sasuke and Himeko headed to Naruto's apartment hoping to cheer him up, but when they got there all they found was Splinter and the turtles. Can we help you too? Splinter asked. Master Splinter where's Naruto we want to talk to him. Sasuke said. I'm sorry, but Naruto's not here. Leo answered. We thought he'd be with you. Donnie said. Yeah I mean you guys passed your exams didn't you? Raf asked. We did, but Naruto didn't. Himeko answered. They guessed at hearing that, he didn't pass. Mikey asked. They shook their heads, and Sasuke added, and he left class furiously. Splinter looked, as if he saw a ghost after hearing that he failed his exam, left in anger, and hasn't come home to talk about it isn't a good sign. I fear the worst for my student. We gotta go, and find him. Leo suggested. We're coming too. Sasuke said, as he, and Himeko looked serious. Alright, but you'll follow our lead. Leo instructed, and the two nod. Go with care of my sons, and return safely. Splinter instructed. Yes father. The turtles reply, as they take off with Sasuke and Himeko. The six were wandering throughout the village until Sasuke spotted Iruka looking, as well. What's Sensei doing out here? Sasuke wondered. Let's see what's up. Raf said, as they followed him. Meanwhile at the training ground Naruto was reading through the scroll. Cage Bunshin no is amazing. With this I won't need the plain stupid Bunshin no Jutsu. Iruka suddenly appeared before the blonde Naruto. He scolded. Oh evening Iruka Sensei. Naruto greeted me. Don't give me that, do you realize what you just did? Iruka replied in disappointment. Yeah I could receive extra credit by learning a jutsu from this scroll right? Naruto asked. Who told you that? Iruka was confused. Mizuki sensei did, of course. Naruto answered. Mizuki? Iruka gasped at why he would tell Naruto this until it dawned on him, Naruto got down. He pushed Naruto down just in time for a large shuriken to miss them. The two look up seeing Mizuki in a tree looking maniacal, well what do we have here, two for the price of one. Mizuki, what is the meaning of this? Iruka demanded out his assistant. It's simple Iruka. I know various people willing to pay me handsomely for the contents of that scroll. Mizuki answered. Naruto get out of here, and take the scroll with you. Iruka ordered Naruto. No Naruto handed the scroll over. If you do, I'll share with you an important secret on why you're looked down upon. Mizuki tempted him. Mizuki no, that's forbidden. Iruka shouted only to get impaled in the leg with a kunai. Unknown to them Sasuke and Himeko were watching in fear as to what was about to happen, and they listened. The truth is the Kyubi Kitsune that attacked our village years ago wasn't killed by the Yandame, instead it was sealed inside a baby the night it was born. That was you Naruto. Mizuki began, in other words, you're the nine-tailed fox that killed so many of our beloved shinobi years ago. The same fox that killed our fourth Hokage. He ranted which got gasps out of Sasuke and Himeko, while Iruka barely able to stand, could only watch wondering how the boy will take it. Naruto was looking at Mizuki blankly before finally speaking, is that all? What? Mizuki asked, knowing that wasn't the reaction he wanted. Is that what you have to say? Because the thing is team I've been aware of for a while now. Naruto said plainly. Iruka and Mizuki were shocked, along with the hidden cousins. Naruto continued, but to call me himself. Now that's just wrong, Naruto said, as he unsheathed his katanas, let's dance pal. Mizuki was just furious seeing how things weren't going how he planned it. He jumped for Naruto grabbing another giant shuriken, and used it as a hand-to-hand -hand weapon against Naruto's katanas. You were supposed to have cried, and begged for mercy Kayabi. Mizuki shouted at Naruto. That's not my style. Naruto deflected his giant shuriken. Iruka watched as Naruto and Mizuki fought. 
He was impressed to see that despite his performance with the clone jutsu his other ninja skills were incredible. Naruto shifted from his katanas to his bow staff, and then his sei, forcing Mizuki to go all out. Naruto looked past Mizuki seeing Sasuke and Himeko forming hand signs. He smirked and jumped back gaining distance. Kaden. The Kakyu no Jutsu. The two shouted, firing a double stream of fire right from Mizuki. The traitor jumped away barely avoiding the flames, so the remaining members of the Ichiha and Enkoku. I guess it'll be my job to finish you two off. Leave them alone traitors. Naruto shouted, throwing a punch at Mizuki, only to have his arm get caught and thrown aside. Your end is now Kayubi. Mizuki got ready to throw his shuriken, but Asai knocked it out of his hand. They looked above seeing four shadows. Turtles counted off. Leo shouted, as they jumped down, one. Two. Mikey called. Three. Donnie called. Four. Raf called. Mutants. Mizuki questioned in shock. That's right bub. Raf answered with a deep voice. You wanna fight? You'll fight all of us. Sasuke added. Eldic eyes, Naruto interrupted them. I appreciate what you've done, but I wanna finish this myself. Naruto said, as he stood before them, and formed a few hand signs, Taju Cage Bunch and No Jutsu. He shouted, and suddenly appeared where thousands of Naruto clones were all solid. Solid clones. Uruka and Mizuki gasped. Now that's cool. Meki said with white eyes. You said it. Raf agreed. Sugoi. Himeko gasped. Mizuki started at the thousands of clones with some of them grabbing their katanas, say, bows, and chucks. Get him. Naruto shouted, as they all charged the screaming traitor. When morning came, Mizuki was down, and out with a bruised face. Uruka was finally able to stand up, and watch Naruto, the turtles, and his friends. Naruto is what Mizuki said was true. Sasuke asked. Yes Sasuke it is. Naruto said with his head down. I can't believe you were never told this. Himeko gasped. I know. Sasuke smirked, well does it matter. You're still Naruto whether you got a demon in you or not. Naruto looked up seeing Sasuke, and Himeko smiling, thanks guys. Naruto. Uruka called, as he approached, I'm sorry for being a jerk. For saving my life, and learning a forbidden jutsu I'd like to award you with this. Uruka presented him with a headband. For me really? Naruto asked with a tear in his eye. You've earned it. Uruka nodded while smiling. Ergato sensei. Naruto cried. His brothers patted him on the back with congratulations, as Splinter watched from another tree, obviously seeing the whole fight, well done my son. Splinter said to himself. After Naruto, Sasuke, Himeko, the Turtles, and Uruka foiled the plans of the traitor Mizuki, he was put under Kanoha lockup with zero chance of parole. Two days later Naruto was at his apartment getting ready for the squad selections that would take place at the academy. Naruto tied his headband around his head, and sheathed his weapons just in case. He was about to leave until Splinter, and the Turtles stood before him. What's up guys? Naruto asked. My son today is the day you will be assigned to a team leader, and a squad. Splinter started. I know sensei. Naruto nodded. We just want you to know how proud we are of you Naruto. Leo added. Yeah, you sure showed that Mizuki punk that nobody walks all over you. Raf put in. Thanks guys. Naruto smiled. Oh now my son, the academy awaits you. Splinter showed him the door. Ergato, father. He walked out. Soon he arrived at the ninja academy, and entered seeing Sasuke and Himeko at a table. Hey guys. Naruto called, as he sat with them. Good to see you made it, Naruto. Sasuke smirked. I miss today of all days. I don't think so. I can't wait to see how things will be set up. Himeko wondered, as they relaxed before class started, and she sang softly to herself. Soon the whole room started shaking, earthquake. Naruto asked. No worse. Himeko feared. The doors burst open revealing Sakura, and Ino, I win. They shouted together, and started going at it arguing about who really made it first. Sasuke sighed, and those two actually passed the genin exams. He asked his cousin and friend. Naruto and Himeko shrugged their shoulders, until they saw the two fangirls, and just about every other fangirl in class came to their desk, damn it. Sasuke said to himself. Sasuke-kun, can I please sit next to you? Sakura asked sweetly. Dream on billboard brow. I'm sitting next to Sasuke-kun. Ino argued. Soon the fangirls argued until Naruto who was getting irritated took a sigh, and threw it at a desk close to them snapping them out of their quarrel, and turning their attention towards them. You girls think you can shout any louder? Naruto asked in sarcasm, I can still hear out of this one. He pointed to his right ear. Shut up Baka. Stay out of this. Sakura shot back. You the one that should shut up, Sasuke said back, causing every girl to look at him in shock, especially Sakura. You think I'd actually let you or any other girl sit next to me after insulting my pal? But Sasuke kun Sakura gasped. Hey, you heard my cousin, Himeko began, so why don't you all go somewhere else to rest your butts? Naruto chuckled at Himeko telling them off. The girls seeing no alternative sit wherever. Soon Uruka joined the class to announce the squads. 
Now listen to the class, as of now you're all ninjas of this village, and I am proud to have been your instructor. The Rook has started, I am about to announce the teams from my class. But before that I'd like to give the Rookie of the Year award to the top student in this year. He continued. Erika took out a scroll, and smiled at the students, and this year's Rookie of the Year is him, well what do you know? What is it, Sensei? Himeko asked. This year's Rookie of the Year is in fact a tie. Eruka answered. A tie? Sakura gasped. No way. Sasuke gasped. Who? Naruto asked. Well Naruto they're none other than you, and Sasuke. Naruto, and Sasuke looked at each other, both of us. They asked. Eruka nodded, and placed it between the two, trying to share the award. He instructed them. Hi, Sensei. They replied followed by a fist pound for their victory. And now I shall read off this year's squad selections, however, due to an odd number of students, one team will be selected to have four, Uruka explained, getting everyone's attention. Soon he started reading off names and instructors, and after a few teams were mentioned, Team 7 which will be the 4 Genin team, shall be composed of Uzumaki Naruto, he started catching Naruto's attention, Ichiha Sasuke, Sasuke smiled, as he, and Naruto high five for being on a team, Haruno Sakura, Naruto, and Sasuke face fold, and Sakura squealed like a stuck pig. Sasuke was banging his head on the desk for being paired with the most rabid of his fangirls, and finally, Iruka continued getting the three's attention, and Koku Himeko. Naruto cheered, Sakura's face faulted, and Sasuke was cheering in his thoughts, thank you Kami, thank you. He thought that being paired with Naruto and Himeko would keep him from either trying to kill himself to escape Sakura or rather kill Sakura herself. Iruka then continued the squad number and names, teammates shall consist of Hayuga Hinata, Inuzuka Kiba, and Abiru Mishino. Iruka called. Hinata smiled, but deep down wished she called up in with Naruto. Iruka then continued mentioning Team 9 which was of no importance, and the final squad, and finally Team 10 consists of Yamanaka Ino, Nara Shikamaru, and Akamichi Chaoji. Ino whined, Shikamaru yawned the word troublesome, and Chaoji just ate from his bag of chips. Well there's nothing much to say except for good luck, and congratulations to all of you. Your senseis will be here momentarily. Iruka said, as he left the room. Well at least they didn't break up the dream team. Naruto said to Sasuke, and Himeko who nodded, while Sakura didn't know how to get in on their conversation. Soon one after another a Jonah ninja came in taking one squad, and soon squad 7 was all that was left, we've been waiting for 3 hours now. Himeko complained. Maybe he's still out on a mission. Sakura believed. If he were we would have been told. Sasuke answered. I know. It's taking way too long, Naruto stood up, this Jonah needs to be taught a lesson for making his own squad wait. Naruto said, as he jumped out the window, and within a few minutes he came back with some supplies. A makeshift catapult Donnie invented, a pot of tomato sauce, and three pizzas freshly made. What's with the pizza? Sakura asked in confusion. A little something I like to call payback for making us wait. Naruto answered, as he set up the catapult by the window right in the doorway's angle with one of the pieces on the catapult, the pot of tomato sauce above the doorway, and two of the pieces on each side of the doorway on smaller catapults. What are you going to do? Sasuke asked. A little something Mikey taught me. A prank he used on Raph one time. Naruto explained. Mikey, Raph. Sakura was confused. Friends of mine. Naruto replied. Himeko froze, I heard someone coming. Naruto quickly got to his seat to watch what would happen. Soon the door opened, and stepping in was a jonin with white hair, his headband covering one eye, and a mask covering his mouth and nose. He entered only to have the pot of tomato sauce fall on him from above covering him, along with the first two pieces flung at both sides of his head, and finally the catapult triggered the final pizza, getting him in the face. The force was so strong he flew out the door, and his back hit the wall, and landed on his rear. Though I hate anchovies. Jonin whined, as the pizza fell off his face. He sighed, wiping the sauce, and pizza cheese from his face. Why did I ever agree to go back to being a regular Jonin? He complained. He went back in, and the four genin were chuckling at how the jonin looked covered in pizza. The jonin eyed them, well my first impression of all of you is you're all stupid. The genin sighed, but still laughed, let's meet on the roof at 10. Right now I gotta clean this off. He said taking his leave. Nice one Naruto. Sasuke chuckled. Too clever. Himeko laughed. Well it was funny I guess. Sakura admitted lightly, but was cracking up on the inside. Soon the four of them met with the jonin who was cleaning up on the roof. Now then, since we will be squad 7 let's start by introductions. Jonin explained. Introductions? Naruto asked. Yes, such as likes, dislikes, hobbies, and plans for the future. In that case shouldn't you go first sensei? Himeko asked. Very well. My name's Kakashi Haddock, he started which made Naruto realize he was the Anbu who always watching out for him in the shadows when he was younger. My likes I cannot share with you, I have many dislikes, I have lots of hobbies, and plans for the future well, I never really thought about it. The four looked disappointed, well that wasn't much help all we got was his name. 
Sakura whispered to the others. Okay now for all of you starting with the weapons war. Kakashi motioned to Naruto. Alright then, my name's Naruto Uzumaki. I like ramen, pizza, comics, training, my friends, Master Splinter, and my brothers. Naruto started which already got Sakura confused about who Master Splinter and his brothers were knowing full well he's an orphan. My dislikes include when my brothers occasionally mess with me especially Raf and how long it takes for ramen and pizza to be ready. My hobbies include training with my master and my brothers and just relaxing. My dream for the future is to one day be Hokage and to make an image for myself. Takashi thought, he sure has changed since he started learning under Splinter San he turned to Sakura, now you. Sakura Haruno, my likes are she smiled at Sasuke, my hobby she still smiled at Sasuke, and my dream for the future is she still stared at Sasuke, who was looking ready to commit suicide. Oh great fangirl. Kakashi thought, and spoke, and your dislikes. Naruto, and Himeko. She growled. Naruto snorted, what the hell did I do? He asked himself. Well your forehead is so white it should come with its own zip code. Himeko remarked about Sakura's forehead. What was that? Sakura screeched. Now now girls calm down. Kakashi said, breaking them up. Where is she learned that? Sasuke asked Naruto. Mikey? Naruto replied. Sakura huffed and crossed her arms, all right then you. Kakashi motioned to Himeko. I'm Himeko and Koku. I like anything sweet, singing, and my cousin Sasuke. I dislike people who are mean for no reason, and people who interrupt me while I'm singing. My hobbies are singing, training, and rock climbing. My dream for the future is to find out the source of my hidden abilities, and make good use of them. Kakashi smiled to himself, and thought, well I hope you do Himeko he thought, and turned to Sasuke, now it's your turn. My name is Sasuke Chiha. I hate a lot of things, and I have select likes which include my cousin, Naruto, and training. My dream is more like an ambition, I'm going to restore my family's honor, and surpass a certain someone. Kakashi thought, at least he's calm, and not too focused on revenge he then cleared his throat. Alright then starting tomorrow we'll put you forward to your test. Tess, but we already passed didn't we? Naruto asked. The genin exams were just to see if you had what it takes to meet shinobi standards, Kakashi explained, my test will determine if you're ready to actually be one. We will meet tomorrow at the old training ground. Oh, and don't bother eating breakfast you'll throw it up, he said earning cringes out of him, see you later. He vanished in Shunshin. Well we better go. Naruto said, as he left along with Sasuke and Himeko before Sakura could pester him into going out with her. Later on Naruto was by a training field using three shadow clones plus himself to practice with all of his weapons. Each clone was sparring with a partner with a twin katana wielding Naruto who was the real one, fighting against the Sai wielding Naruto, while the boy wielding Naruto, fought against the Naruto using the nunchucks. That's it guys keep it up, Naruto ordered, as he deflects the Naruto clone carrying the Sei. They continued sparring against each other until it was over. The clones dispelled, and Naruto stretched, oh yes that's what I'm talking about. He then heard clapping from behind him. He spun to see a girl wearing a Kanoha headband like his. Needless to say she was a cutie chocolate brown eyes, and brown hair in a style that looked like panda ears. Her attire appeared to have been a pink Chinese shirt, dark pants, and sandals. Very impressive. The girl said, smiling. Thanks, Naruto said until he got a look at her, so what are you doing out here? I come here a lot to train with my own weapons. That's my specialty, she started, my name's Tenten, and yours. Naruto is Maki. Naruto bowed his head. Tenten smiled, ah, I've heard about you. Well I do have a certain reputation. Naruto said hoping she's not like the others who have been told to not trust him. I know, and I don't know why people are mean to you. Neither do I. He replied. Anyway I practice with my weapons here a lot. I didn't expect to find anyone else here training with weapons. Tenten explained. Well I just got these weapons a few days ago. My master said my skills are impressive, but still feels they could get better. I can see that, Tenten replied never seeing another ninja good with weapons like her, listen I got an idea. Why don't you come here a few times a week if you're not too busy, and we'll practice together. She offered. Naruto looked at her surprised. You would do that? He asked her, as she smiled, and nodded in confirmation. Arigato. Soon that night Naruto arrived back home to see his master, and his brothers, so how'd it go? Maki asked. The perfect success, Naruto explained, I partnered up with Sasuke and Himeko, along with a girl from my class named Sakura. You sound like having that girl is bad. Donnie noticed his tone with her name. It's not so bad, it's just she doesn't like any of us unless it's Sasuke. She's what you might know, as a fangirl. Naruto explained. Splinter sighed, a true ninja must not let their own wants and desires be put ahead of the team. I know, but we'll make sure she realizes that. Our Jonin sensei is none other than Kakashi, the old Anbu who used to keep watch over me, as a child. Well at least you've got someone you can trust. Leo said. I know. Well it's getting late, and I have a test in the morning. Naruto yawned. Another test. But you just passed. Raf said in surprise. 
Yeah, but this one determines if we're cut out to actually be ninja, Naruto said. Well good night guys. Oh, and Meki I owe you for teaching me, and Himeko some awesome pranks, and jokes. He said before going to bed. The turtles, and Splinter turned to Mikey who chuckled sheepishly, I don't know what he's talking about. Soon it was morning, and Naruto sat at his table enjoying breakfast, and a warm cup of tea. This is good. Sensei said not to eat, otherwise we'll throw it up, but I can't help it. I need my energy. He finished eating, and stood up grabbing his ninja weapons, okay I'm off. Good luck my son. May you fight well. Splinter said. I won't let you down father. Naruto hurried off. Soon Naruto made it to the training ground where Sasuke, Sakura, and Himeko were. Naruto looked around seeing no sign of Kakashi, he ain't here yet. Naruto asked, and the others nodded. Naruto sighed, as he decided to make the best of it by sitting down, and reading a copy of Justice Force Mikey loaned him. For hours they waited until finally Kakashi showed up. Yo. He called. You're late. The genin shouted. Yeah sorry, but I got lost on the road to life. Kakashi explained sheepishly while rubbing the back of his head. Liar. Sakura and Himeko shouted. Takashi cleared his throat, anyway, it's good to see you all showed up. Now the test can begin, he said holding up three bells, your job is to try to get these from me. Bells? Naruto asked. Yes. Should you get the bells from me you will be acknowledged by me, as being part of my squad. Takashi answered. Hold on, we are there only three when there are four of us. Sasuke noticed. That's the second part of this exam. The one who does not get a bell will be sent back to the academy, Kakashi answered which shocked everyone, however you will be timed on this, and when time runs out, and neither of you require a bell, then you'll all be sent back to the academy. Oh great. Himeko groaned. This can't be. Sakura feared. But it is, Kakashi replied. He sat the timer on a stump. To get a bell you'll have to come at me with the intent to kill. He started the timer, go. The ninjas took off to hide their appearances. Himeko soon got ready to go for him until Sasuke and Naruto held her back and brought her back to Sakura. Himeko didn't like being carried like a child by her cousin, Naruto. She glowed with a small aura of her two chakras, and her hair fell over the left side of her face. What are you doing? We got to get those bells. Himeko said in a tomboyish voice compared to her nice voice. And what, sacrifice one of us to be sent to the academy? Sasuke asked. Well if we do sacrifice someone it should be a princess here. Himeko motioned to Sakura. What does Wudaya mean? Sakura growled. Girls knock it off. Naruto barked, don't you see this is what he wants, to turn us against each other. What? Sakura and Himeko looked confused. Sasuke nodded in confirmation, he's using three bells to make us turn on each other, so that none of us will win. So what can we do? Himeko asked. We have to attack him together. One genin against a full-time jonin is just kidding oneself, Naruto explained, let's go. Naruto ordered, as he and Himeko hurried, as she looked at Sakura, don't screw up. Sakura looked at Sasuke, what's with her? Sasuke sighed trying to make it simple, well after our family's massacre something inside her subconscious awoke, giving her split personality that's not as friendly as the Himeko we've known. Word of advice, don't make her mad when the left side of her face is covered by her hair. Sakura nodded, and the two joined them. Naruto emerged from hiding to see his sensei reading an orange book, hey sensei. Naruto shouted drawing his say. Kakashi gasped quickly, putting his book away, and grabbed two to deflect the match against Naruto's weapons. Not bad Naruto, your skills are definitely combat material. Thanks, but I'm not the only one you should be looking out for. Naruto answered. What? Kakashi gasped until he saw Sakura throwing a kunai right for him wrapped in a paper bomb. He jumped out of the way before it could impact him. He then looked aside seeing Sasuke launching a fireball right for him, and on the other side seeing Himeko forming hand signs, ninja art, yin yang discs. She shouted, as she created chakra discs made from her light and dark chakra. She held one disc in each hand, and leaped to Kakashi still airborne, and swings one disc at him, Kakashi used an evasive maneuver while in air, and leaned back only to have Naruto throw a sigh at his waist, and snatches the three bells, and had a clone catch the sigh. We got them. Sakura cheered. Hmm. Sasuke smirked. The clone Naruto gave the bells to the real one, and Kakashi landed before them. Well congratulations for getting the bells using teamwork, however Naruto since you have all three bells, the fate of this squad rests in your hands. You can keep one for yourself, and select who you want. Naruto smiled, I got a better idea. Naruto said giving the three bells to Sasuke, Sakura, and Himeko. What are you doing Naruto? Sakura asked in shock. You're giving them the bells except yourself. Kakashi questioned his actions. If I kept one for myself, and just gave the other two away to all, but one then I'd just be selfish, Naruto answered, and my sensei didn't raise me to be selfish. Himeko shook her head causing her hair not to cover her face, signaling her old personality was back in control. But Naruto you said you wanted to make something of yourself, and become Hokage. You won't be able to if you're not a ninja. Take mine. She tossed him her bell. Himeko. 
Naruto gasped. You too? Kakashi asked. I'd give up all I have for my friend. Himeko answered. And I would do the same for my family. Sasuke said, tossing his own belt to Himeko. Guys, you'd be better off if I went back to the academy, Sakura began. After all the quizzes, and such I excel in. She handed her belt to Sasuke. So you'd all be willing to sacrifice yourselves just for your teammates? Kakashi asked, looking at each of them. They all nodded, and Kakashi glared at them. Well then all I have to say to you is you pass. His eyes smiled. We what? Sakura asked, lost for words, as were the others. You pass. By willing to sacrifice yourselves for your teammates you've learned to work together, as a squad, and look out for each other. Kakashi explained. Alright. Naruto and Himeko cheered while Sakura smiled along with Sasuke. And remember this those who break the rules are trash, but those who abandon their comrades are worse than trash, Kakashi added. Alright then starting tomorrow squad 7 will be official. They heard clapping, and appearing with Splinter, and his sons, a most amusing display of teamwork I must say. For real. Mikey added. Sakura screeched, and hid behind Sasuke, who are they? My master, and my brother Sakura. Naruto answered. Master, and brothers. Sakura gasped realizing these were the people Naruto was talking about during his introduction yesterday. Hi, I am Splinter, and these are my sons, Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello, and Raphael. Splinter introduced them to Sakura, as well as Kakashi. You all did well. Leo said. Furukis. Raph joked, causing Naruto and Himeko to frown. Come on guys let's go celebrate. Pizza all around. Meki cheered, as Naruto, Himeko, Sasuke joined them while Kakashi left. Sakura watched in despair until Sasuke looked over. Hey Sakura, wanna join us, you're part of the team remember? Oh right, and sure. Sakura smiled, and ran after them to celebrate. One morning out in a clear area of the forest, Naruto, Sakura, Sasuke, and Himeko were hiding behind some trees with transivers in their ears, so they could communicate with each other. Uzumaki to Uchiha, can you hear me? Naruto spoke into his set calling Sasuke by a codename. Loud and clear, Uzumaki, Sasuke answered, Cherry Blossom do you copy? Roger that Uchiha, Sakura replied back, how about you bird, you read me. Copy that Cherry Blossom. Target approximately 1.4 meters ahead. Himeko replied. Okay guys, this is it. Naruto started, and now. They took off after some kind of creature that was running away like a tiger, don't lose sight of it. Sasuke called. The thing was running through the forest like crazy, as they chased after it. Naruto frowned, hating to do this wild goose chase. Cage bunch and no jutsu. Naruto shouted, summoning five clones that went ahead, and all of them pounced on the target to reveal that what they were chasing was a cat with a bow in his ear. The clones dispelled, as Sakura, Himeko, and Sasuke arrived, you got it. Himeko called. Yeah, but now I wish I didn't. Naruto shouted, as the cat started maiming him. Sasuke called into his transceiver, Sensei, our target has been caught. But report back to the Hokage office immediately. Kakashi's voice came back from the transceiver. As they walked down the road through the village to the Hokage tower they ran into the turtles, and their sensei, Morning Master Splinter, guys. Himeko greeted them. The day squad 7, and how are we this morning? Splinter asked. Not bad, we're just finishing a mission. Sakura answered. Raph noticed Naruto holding the cat that was still clawing him, walking a cat is your mission. He asked in disbelief. Not walk, retrieve. Naruto groaned, as he tried to pry the cat off his face. You gotta be kidding me. Raph said. It's a D-rank mission Raph. D-ranks are like charity work. Himeko explained. Right Himeko, now you take it. Naruto tossed her the cat, and it started clawing Himeko. Ouch, stop it. Himeko groaned, this is why I'm mostly a dog person. She shouted, as the cat continued to claw her. There's only one cat I like, and it's Clunk. She shouted, talking about Mikey's pet cat. Yeah Clunk definitely rarely does that sort of thing to others, Mikey explained before eyeing Raph, unless it's Raph. He added earning a smack on the head from said turtle. Himeko groaned, I'm going to take all nine lives of this cat. Don't say that. We have to return it to its owner. Sakura reminded her. Himeko smirked, then you carry it the rest of the way. She tossed the cat to Sakura, and she got the same treatment from the cat, as Naruto and Himeko were treated by it. The turtles and their sensei accompanied them to see how they were awarded for their mission. Inside the building the cat was being squeezed and cuddled to death by its owner, who was a very portly woman. She was the fire daimyo's wife. Oh my sweet little Tora I was so worried about you. The woman cheered cuddling with the cat. Squad 7 along with the turtles had their own thoughts about what they were watching, that's it squeeze a little harder. Naruto thought. No wonder it ran away. Sakura thought. When I'm old enough and earn my place in the council I'm going to recommend this mission be ranked up to A rank. Sasuke thought knowing how hard the mission was. Maybe we should have let it go free. Himeko thought. Raph was chuckling in his thoughts, oh man this is better than watching wrestling on pay-per-view. 
Mekki looked worried, as he thought, I would never do anything like that to Klunk for sure. That is definite cruelty to animals. Leo thought to himself. And that lady wonders why her cat runs away, Donnie thought. I never thought I would feel sympathy for my own predator. Splinter thought. Well done Squad 7, another mission completed. Sir Toby congratulated them. Yes, Sandame sama Kakashi bowed his head along with his team. Naruto steps forward, Gigi, me, and my team would like to talk. Yes Naruto. Well we talked about it, and we requested a higher mission. Naruto explained, and his team nodded. Sir Toby raised a brow, well how do you feel about this Kakashi? Well they have completed the regular amount of D ranks to qualify for a higher rank, so I feel they could be ready, but it does end with your final thought sir. Kakashi noted the Hokage. The Hokage pondered before deciding, very well. I have just a mission for you. Iruka was sent to Tazuna. Saratobi commanded, and Iruka went, and came back with an old man holding a bottle of sake, and looked a little smashed. Is this? Mikey asked. Everyone meets Tazuna, a bridge builder from the Land of Waves. Saratobi introduced them. The old man known as Tazuna looked around at the squad. What? These are the people you hired to protect me. He asked, they don't look much, especially Blondie. He snorted, and right then Naruto grabbed a sigh, and threw it at the wall Tazuna was by giving him a hint, as to what he was capable of, I suddenly stood corrected. Darn right. Naruto smirked while learning a giggle from Himeko. Well then why don't you explain to them the situation? Sirotobi asked Tazuna. Well, the thing is, I'm a bridge builder, and I'm in need of protection from rival parties, who don't want me to complete my task of completing my bridge back in the wave country. Tazuna explained. They listened carefully, and Splinter approached the Hokage, pardon me Sandame Sama. Yes Splinter-san? Sirotobi asked. May I suggest you allow my sons to accompany Squad 7 to the Wave Country? Splinter offered, I feel they could use a change of air from being in the village for too long. It's fine with me. Are you four interested? The Hokage asked the four mutants. The four turtles bowed their heads to the Hokage. It would be an honor to partake in this mission, Hokage-sama. Leo answered for his brothers. Very well. Everyone returns home, and packs. We leave in half an hour. Kakashi explained, as his team exited through the door while the turtles went through the open window, and jumped the rooftops. At Naruto's place, Naruto was packing the essentials for the mission along with the turtles, while Mikey studied his sack filled with comics. Mikey, I doubt you'll need every copy of Monster Blood Chronicles on this mission. Donnie said, dumping the comics out of Mikey's sack. But when I get bored I seriously get bored. Mikey complained. Yeah, and when you do you have to make us suffer with you. Raph added, already feeling annoyed. Come on guys, this mission won't be so bad. I mean we haven't been out of this village in a long time. Leo explained. Indeed my son. This is why I've recommended you join Squad 7. Splinter added. Soon they all packed up, and headed for the door, while we're off. Naruto told Splinter. But look my sons. Splinter bid them farewell. We won't let you down father. Leo said, as they headed out. Soon they met by the gates of Kanoha where the rest of Squad 7, and Tazuna were waiting, okay everybody's here. We're all set to go. Kakashi ordered. Woohoo road trip. Mikey cheered until Raph smacked the back of his head, save it Mikey. Within a half an hour they were walking down the path, and each other was doing certain things to keep themselves preoccupied. Naruto, Leo, and Donnie were walking ahead taking a look at the forest surrounding the area, while behind them Raph was on guard, expecting to fight something that might come at them. Sakura was asking all sorts of questions to Sasuke, who was trying to drown her out. While Himeko was trying to distance the too much to Sakura's annoyance. Mikey was reading one comic book while Kakashi was reading his orange book, and Tazuna took a swig of sake. They walked until they noticed something moving inside Mikey's sack. What's that? Sakura asked. Duh, it's nothing. Mikey answered nervously. Mikey? His brother said collectively knowing he was hiding something. Alright. Mikey sighed, opening his sack to reveal an orange cat. It was his pet Clunk. Mikey, you brought Clunk with you. Donnie asked in disbelief. Are you crazy about bringing a pet on a mission? Raph asked in outrage. Hey I couldn't help it Clunk wanted to come. Mikey answered, as Clunk meowed. Well we're too far from the village to go back now, so he'll have to come. Kakashi said. Terrific. Raph sighed. Come on, we better get a move on. Sasuke said, as they continued on, while unaware of a pair of eyes watching them from a bush, and was following them. Soon they were walking past a puddle of water on the side of the road. Naruto, Sasuke, and Himeko, along with Donnie, Leo, and Kakashi noticed that, and all had the same thoughts on it. A puddle on a bright sunny day like this. They thought. It's an ambush. Leo thought. Suddenly emerging from the puddle was a camouflage cloaked man with a gas mask who vanished. As he left the puddle, everyone on guard. Kakashi called, as Sasuke, Himeko, and Sakura protected Tazuna. Naruto drew one katana, and one sai, while the turtles drew their own weapons, and got ready to fight. 
Suddenly in a blur something flew past Kakashi, and the Jonin found himself wrapped in a binding chain, and the two chain links linked to the one figure, and another who were wearing giant metal gauntlets. We got you now. One of the assassins said through Gazmisk. I don't think so. Leo shouted, as he and Naruto used their katanas to chop the chains freeing Kakashi. No way. The two assassins gasped seeing their captive was freed. They gained some distance, and appeared in two trees close to each other. Kakashi looks up at them, hum if memory recalls you two are the only brothers Gaozu and Maizu of Kiri. Well brother looks like we found someone who's heard of us. Maizu said to the other. Indeed we have brothers. All the more pleasant it will be when we kill him. Gaozu replied. The two brothers dove down ready to attack until Naruto, Sasuke, and the turtles went on the attack. Maizu battled against Naruto, Sasuke, and Raph, while Mikey, Donnie, and Leo went up against Gaozu. Oh yeah just like kicking, but back home. Raph said, I wish Casey was here to enjoy this. The demon brothers continued fighting until Maizu got away from his opponents, and went for Tazuna, being protected by Himeko and Sakura. The two got ready to fight, but before them were Kakashi could attack him, a puppy that looked like a cross between an Akita and a wolf with his fur looking like a mixture of white and black, jumped from a bush, and tackled Maizu off balance, and landed by the girl's side growling at the assassin. Manji Mutt. Maizu got ready to strike only to get smacked in the back of the head by Kakashi, and fell unconscious. Brother. Gaozu tried to help his brother only to be surrounded by the turtles that turned around so their shells faced him. Time for a shell shock. Meki called, as they rammed him on all sides with their hard shells knocking him out. Kakashi sighed in relief seeing the two assassins defeated, well done squad 7, and your 4, as well, Kakashi congratulated them. They all bowed their heads in respect. Kakashi turned to Tazuna, now then Tazuna, you have some explaining to do. The squad and the turtles looked at Tazuna with confusion, while the merchant looked guilty of something. You realize that a mission that involves targeting you should be a B-rank mission, not a C-rank. I'm sorry, but the land of waves is a poor land. There was no way we could afford a B-rank mission, Tazuna explained sadly. We used to be a happy country, but that all faded away when a man by the name of Gato appeared. Leo asked. The owner of Gato Shippings. Kakashi asked. Tazuna nodded, that's right. Who is he? Meki asked. Gato's the owner of a company known for shipping and distributing. Kakashi explained. So what's he after? Himeko asked curiously. He's an evil tyrant that's been forcing us all to rely on his company, so he could charge us at unfair prices. Tazuna continued, I need to finish the bridge I'm building, because he controls the waters around the land. If we can bypass that we won't be forced to rely on him ever again. That's horrible. Donnie said about Gato and his shady methods. Somebody ought to teach that guy a lesson. Raph added. What do we do now sensei? Sakura asked Kakashi. Well normally we should report back and tell this to the Hokage of what just happened. Kakashi began. I understand but they'll kill me before I even get home. Please, I'm begging you. Tazuna pleaded, looking desperate. Well why not? We'll stay and protect you for the time it takes you to build the bridge. Kakashi said giving in to defeat and his own kindness, even though he knew Chunin wouldn't be coming after him the next time. Thank you so much, Tazuna said with a bow. I don't care about my own life as long as I live to finish that bridge. Well then what are we waiting for let's roll. Naruto called, and the others nodded, after tying the Oni brothers to a tree. Before they walked on, the puppy that saved them approached, you're the one that saved us. Himeko said getting down to the puppy's level, and it licked her face causing her to giggle. Look, he likes her. Maki noticed. Yes well can we go now? Raph asked. Himeko looked at them, I don't want to just leave this puppy especially after what he did for us. Your point is? Raph asked bluntly. Well he doesn't have a license, so Sasuke can I keep him? Himeko asked her cousin. They all looked at her, and then at Sasuke. The Chiha boy thought about this knowing having a pet would keep her company, and a companion to help keep her calm, so her double personality doesn't kick in, as much. Well okay. Sasuke answered. Hurry. Himeko cheered with the puppy. So what are you gonna call it? Naruto asked. I got it. I'll call you Taichi, because of the black and white patterns in his fur. She said, referencing the yin-yang symbol. Nice horse. Leo admitted. Clunk peeked out of Mikey's bag, and Mikey sat him down, clunk, tai chi, tai chi, clunk. Mikey introduced him. The puppy walked up to the cat who stared at him until tai chi licked clunk's face, signaling he liked him even though clunk's a cat. Well they're getting along well. Sakura said. Indeed. Well come on team we better get going. Kakashi ordered, as Himeko picked tai chi up, and Mikey grabbed clunk, and they headed off for wave country. After the fight with the Oni brothers, squad 7, the turtles, and Tazuna had traveled on a ferry that took them all the way to the wave country. When they reached the dock, they were let off, and continued on through a forest area. As they walked to Meko, and Taichi by her side not wanting anything to happen to him. Soon Taichi growled, sensing something close to them. What is it? Himeko asked, as the dog's gaze was in the direction of a bush. 
Naruto grabbed one Sai and threw it into the bush, and out popped a terrified white rabbit. This confused everyone thinking Taichi was growling at a defenseless rabbit, or a cuddly bunny. Meki cheered picking it up, I will love him, and hug him, and call him George. What a relief huh guys. Raf smacked Meki's head in response, you idiot. Stop clowning around. Does he do this a lot? Sakura asked Donnie. Yup. Donnie answered. Takashi stared cautiously at the white rabbit, that's no wild rabbit he thought. Little did anyone know, someone sat in the trees totally hidden watching them, before disappearing, everybody down. Kakashi yelled, as a gigantic sword spun through the air like a shuriken. Everyone, but Kakashi had to dive to the side to avoid the sword, which then lodged itself into the side of a tree. Whoa. Himeko, and Mikey gasped. Now that is one serious blade. Leo gasped, never seeing one like it. I'm glad you think so. A voice spoke. Everyone looked, and saw a man wearing brown, and white camouflage pants, and arm covers, a Miss Village headband, and white cloth wrapped around his mouth, and nose, who was standing on the handle of the huge sword. Who the hell is that? Donnie asked. Takashi opened his eyes, and readied himself if anything were to happen. Well well, if this isn't an honor. I get to meet the infamous copy ninja had a Kakashi. The man said. Eyes, protect Tazuna now. Kakashi ordered, and the four genin ran in front of Tazuna forming a protective ring around him, turtles backed them up. He added, and the turtles added another layer to the ring. You're leaving an old man's life in the hands of mere children, and freaks. The guy asked. Hey, saying a freak isn't very nice. Mikey called, and motioned to Raph, I mean sure he's not attractive, but Raph's seen better days. Raph growled. He meant all of us meatheads. That sword, and that headband. You're Mamachi Zabuza. Kakashi deduced. Indeed I am. Zabuza said with a slight laugh. Who is that? Raph asked Kakashi who answered. That's Mamachi Zabuza, otherwise known as the Demon of Kiri. He's a rogue ninja from the Hidden Mist Village that worked on the Mist Village's assassination group. He also has a reputation, as a member of one of the legendary seven shinobi swordsmen of Kiri. All in the past, Kakashi. Zabuza replied. Were you hired by Gato? Kakashi asked. I might have been, Zabuza answered, as he grabbed his sword's hilt, pulled it out of the tree, and landed on the ground. I've always wondered if you are, as great as they say you are, Kakashi of the Shuringen. If you're my opponent I'll have to use this. Kakashi said, as he grabbed his headband, and pulled it up revealing his eye, which he opened, and there was the Shuringen, and a scar vertically over it. Kakashi sensei's got the Shuringen. Sakura asked in astonishment. Whoa, how'd he get your family's eye? Raf asked Sasuke who couldn't respond not knowing anything about this. Well then let us begin. Zabuza disappeared only to reappear by a lake, and formed a hand sign. Suddenly the mist around them started getting thicker, and thicker. What's going on here? Maki asked. Why is the mist getting thicker? Donnie asked. No Zabuza called, causing the mist to get thicker. Soon it was so misty no one could see anything. I can't see a thing. Raph called. What do we do? Naruto asked. Remember what Master Splinter taught us guys, trust our senses. Leo said, as the five concentrated hard, and instead of using their eyes, their light on their ears. I wonder where to kill first. Zabuza's voice echoed, what will you do? Zabuza appeared in between behind Squad 7, and in front of Tazuna, with his sword held on his back, as he crouched slightly, and Kakashi looked back, and saw him. Time to die. Zabuza exclaimed, as he got ready to strike. Oh no you don't. Raf said using his say to catch the blade, and held it in mid-chop. Leo rushed, and delivered a kick to Zabuza, but the big guy didn't even flinch from his kick. What is this guy a brick wall? Mikey asked. I don't know, but he's strong like one. Raf strained, unable to keep Zabuza's blade back any longer, and jumped away before he got sliced. Get back. Naruto ordered, as the turtles flung at Zabuza throwing all they had at the swordsman. We aren't making a lot of progress. Mikey said, as he used his chucks against Zabuza. You mean besides taking on a guy who's more than half our size? Raf asked. Well we fought bigger before, haven't we? Mikey asked, as Raf sighed. You four are in annoyance. Zabuza used his own arm to swap them away. Leave my brothers alone. Naruto shouted, as he grabbed his chucks, and attacked Zabuza, but with very little effort like his brothers. You're a real joke kid. Zabuza swatted Naruto aside. You can call yourself a real ninja when you've gone through everything I've been through. Kakashi took a chance, and struck Zabuza with a kunai, but the body broke down into water, and the real Zabuza appeared behind Kakashi. You saw through my Mizubunshin, impressive, but this is over. Zabuza said, and he swung his massive sword horizontally, and shredded through Kakashi slicing him in half. Sensei. The genin yelled. No. The turtles cried. Suddenly they saw Kakashi's two halves break down into water. He used a Mizubunshin, as well. Himeko gasped, making the genin, and turtles relieved he wasn't dead. The next thing Zabuza noticed, Kakashi was behind him holding a kunai's edge near his throat, no Zabuza now it's over. Zabuza laughed, gaining a look of stun from everyone. 
You see I see right through your Shuringen, I knew you'd do this, I'm not beaten that easily. He said, and he broke down into water, and Kakashi's eyes widened and stunned. Tsubuza appeared right behind Kakashi, and swung his sword. Kakashi quickly jumped away avoiding whatever attack Tsubuza was throwing. Guys we have to help him. Leo ordered. And how the hell are we going to do that? Raf asked. Follow my lead. Leo ordered as they charged and joined Kakashi in taking on Tsubuza using their weapons to defend themselves from the massive cleaver. I have to admit you four do have fights with you. What are you creatures, some kind of demons? Tsubuza asked. No, we're just your run-of-the-mill mutant turtles. Mikey answered. I never would have guessed. Tsubuza sarcastically replied as he grabbed Mikey, throwing him into Donnie. Naruto frowns, Taju cage bunch of no jutsu. He shouted, summoning a thousand clones. Half the clones grabbed their say, and the remaining half grabbed their chucks, it's ninja time. The clones called, as they charged Sabusa, throwing every strike they had. Sasuke and Himeko while guarding Tazuna nodded to each other, and started hand signs, Ninpo. Twilight burst. Himeko shouted along with Sasuke firing a fireball jutsu. The two were launched in Zabuza's direction, as Kakashi, the turtles, Naruto, and his clones jumped away leaving the swordsman to take the blow. Zabuza got back to his feet, surprising everyone, as he spoke. That really tickled, but let me show you a real one he started hand signs, as Kakashi mimicked the ones he was forming. Tsuten, Suyuden no Jutsu. They both shouted, and a massive burst of water shot out, and formed into two different water dragons that dashed at each other, and started tearing the other one apart. Through the explosion of water the four turtles flew in delivering a four-way flying kick, knocking him into a nearby tree, and his sword was knocked out of his hand. He groaned before seeing Kakashi standing above him, can you prepare for the future with that Shuringen? Yes, and your future is dead. Kakashi ordered ready to finish him until two flew through the air, and pierced into Zabuza's neck, making him full unconscious. Everyone's eyes widened, as he saw the swordsman fall, and they looked over to where the needles came from. Appearing before them was a ninja in blue clothing with a white mask, and a red swirl on it. Ergato. I was afraid I lost Zabuza's trail a while back, but thanks to you I found him. Who are you? Kakashi asked I'd say, based on the mask, you're a tracker ninja from Kiri. Tracker ninja? Donnie asked. I am indeed a tracker ninja, the boy began, and it's my job to see that body is properly disposed of. Kakashi checks Abusa's pulse, no vital signs. He really is dead. He said which got the genin sighing in relief, especially Tazuna. Taichi, who has sniffed the body, raised his hind leg above him, Taichi. Himeko shouted, not on the corpse. Taichi yipped in disappointment before doing it at a tree instead. The boy jumped down, and landed on Zabuza. Now if you'll excuse me, I must go, and take care of this body. Thanks again. The boy said before disappearing. Who was that guy? Naruto asked himself, as he collected his say. Is everybody okay? Leo asked. Other than my shell aching from fighting against somebody who could take on the shredder, Raph began, I'm okay. Donnie and Mikey nodded along with the genin, signaling they were okay too. Okay let's get going everyone. Kakashi said, as they walked on. My daughter and grandson might be worried, we should hurry. Tazuna said. As Kakashi continued walking he suddenly collapsed, K Kakashi sensei. Sakura exclaimed, as everyone ran up to him. Leo checked his signs, don't worry he's just exhausted. No kidding, I mean he did most of the heavier fighting against that guy. Naruto reminded them. He should be fine once he's rested. Donnie theorized. Leo and Raf got under Kakashi's arms, and carried him along while Mikey and Donnie surrounded them to make sure nothing else attacked them. You think we've seen the worst bro? Mikey asked Donnie. Let's hope we have. Donnie replied. Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.